Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. The new phone books are here, the new phone books are here. We have a new load from Fioki USA in 5.7 by 28 millimeter, my favorite caliber. This is a 35 grain ballistic tip lead free round. Everything I can tell, this is a 35 grain Hornady NTX. Let's throw him on the table and talk about what we're gonna do today. In full transparency, I myself purchased this ammunition from Brownells because at the time, late 2022, this was not available from Fioki USA, although they have promised to send me some. So if we get some more in, we'll have to run some more reliability tests downrange. But because 5.7 is my favorite caliber, we have a multitude of different barrel lengths to run this through, check for velocity and a very basic function test because I only have two boxes. We'll check for our practical accuracy and then we'll send you on your merry way. Since currently I only have one box to this, we only have three rounds in each of all these barrel lengths. I just kind of want to check minimal function and see how we're gaining velocity through those different barrel lengths. Hopefully Fioki will send some more of this for me to evaluate. We have our PSA 5.7 Rock. This has the shortest barrel length out of all of them at 4.7 inches. The 5.7 is 4.75. We've got a seven round extension from Excess Arms. This brings our Rock Magazines rounds. That's not good. That was a failure to feed. A little slow for a 35 grain. That failure to feed could be because of that's undercharged. And sometimes with our 5.7s, if you let them sit with our slower 40 grain rounds, they tend to always choke on the first round. Now we've got our OG. This is our FN 5.7 USG. I've had this the longest. We've got our Eden flat face trigger in here. Very, very nice handgun. So far, it's not looking too good, guys. We got good, reliable function out of the 40 grain load, although this 35 grain load is showing it is very weak. Now we've got our FN57 Mark II USG. This has our Doran Technologies DT Chaos slide cover on there. It's meant to accept a red dot that I have on the rock right now. It's got some nice slide serrations in there. We have Elite Ammunition's flat face adjustable trigger in here as well as their night sights. Very, very nice sights on there. Not too bad there. Now back to our PSA 5.7 Rock. This has the 5.2 inch threaded barrel and our Trigicon RMR up top. Let's see if these run with a optic on the slide. No. There we go. Now on to our longest pistol barrel length. This is our Ruger 5.7. This has the five and a half inch threaded barrel. Got the tandem cross adjustable flat face trigger in there. Still doesn't really help with the mushy double action like pull that this trigger assembly has. Your mileage may vary. What I mainly don't like about the Ruger is the very mushy reset. There's not really a tactile and very audible reset noise on this trigger, so you don't know when you're all the way reset. And now we get into our SBR, PCC, PDW category. This is our CMMG MK57. This has an eight inch barrel, uses any mil spec AR-15 lower, uses their proprietary magazines. They do have different lowers that will use the 5.7 magazines as well from the FN. Not getting cycling, that's not a good thing. Did get lockback though. 
and now for our skinny boy this is our diamondback dbx this guy is just under one inch thick and is very light at three pounds it is considered a pistol although you probably could put a brace and or sbr this this has an eight inch barrel as well what's unique about this one it is gas driven with a dual set of pistons up front it uses our fn 57 magazines Got lock back and full cycling on those three rounds. Like I said, this is a very, very small sample size. Definitely put a lot of this through any of your guns if you want to ensure reliability. And now for our Space Gat, this is our kel P50, 9.6 inch barrel, uses the FN P90 magazines, opens from the top, ejects out the top as well. This one's also pretty light at three pounds, a little on the thicker side though compared to the DBX. And now for Mr. OG, this is our FN P90. This has a 10.4 inch barrel. We're rocking the Imperial Arms FN Specialties FN90 receiver. Although I think they've changed the name of it maybe due to legal reasons. I think it's Crossfire 50 or something now. Got a Holo Sun up top. Now for our newest acquisition in our 5.7 line, this is our Ruger LC Carbine. This has a 16 inch barrel, fairly little hefty guy. The nice thing is it uses our Ruger 5.7 magazines, just like the pistol. I think pretty much the fire control group on this is almost identical. So it pretty much has the same mushy trigger. Did get locked back, but we had one that did not want to cycle the action. And finally, our last 16 inch, this is from Panzer Arms or AR57. This is their AR57 upper. It uses our FNP90 magazines right up here. Pretty much can use any mil spec AR lower. You have to use their buffer. Charging handle is on the right side. I do believe it can be switched to the left and it ejects out of the bottom. And there you have it. Here is our 35 grain loading from Fioki at 25 yards using the Ruger LC carbine with an 18 power first focal plane scope from Primary Arms. There is a little bit of wind outside today. You can see my papers flapping down there. But 0.915 inches. That one was kind of like a flyer had it not had that. Probably would have been just as good right there pretty much par for the course. Our best group was our SS198 at 0.742. American Eagle TMJ was 0.865 inches. The 40 grain Fioki, a four shot group, because I'm trying to conserve, is 0 0.960 inches. Ignore that one. That was a test shot to see if I was on paper. And then our SS197 was 0.831 inches. Well, everyone, I think the lingo on the box, high performance, didn't live up to its name today. Our 35 grain loading was as slow, if not slower, than some of our SS197 and the 40 grain ballistic tip that we actually ran on the same day from Fioki. I'm not sure if someone in the load development department was sleeping when they came up with this load, but typically with a 35 grain load, we should see 1,900 to 2,000 plus feet per second in our pistol barrel lengths. We had reliability issues with this load because of that lighter bullet and slower velocity. Accuracy was pretty much par for the course in all of our 5.7 guns. And because of its reduced velocity, I ended up not wanting to run this in gel because I 
have a feeling that it's not going to perform until we get the velocity up in our longer barrel lengths. With all that being said, it's time for me to get the heck out of here. Don't tell my wife I was wearing a good work shirt out here today. But at the end of all my videos, I take a moment to thank all those who helped make these possible. Number one is my Patreon and subscribe star fans. I have my link tree in the description below, like many other content creators that is used for ways to support me or contact me, or even if you have the little super thanks on the video and you want to say here's two bucks for doing this video that is more than appreciated because half the time i end up buying most of this ammunition myself number two is fioki usa who in full transparency didn't provide any of this ammunition at least for this review i will probably edit this out if they ended up providing me with any for us to test and of course number three is you all for watching until next time i'll catch you at the range